I want to go to libertarianism. I know that you're a big libertarian. I, I'm libertarian-ish, I would say. I, I'm really a le I, I come from the left. I'm a liberal. That's the way I see myself. I'm a total liberal, uh, not by the standards or the definition of today's liberals. I don't know who they are or what they are. Uh, but libertarianism, I, so I, I don't understand. I don't understand how anybody could be, and I guess you'll explain it to me. How can you be a hardcore libertarian? Rules, I mean, rules and regulations are necessary. Even just when you watch a sports game, the reason, what makes it interesting is that there's rules and regulations to the sports game. I don't want to go and see some like Wild West sports, you know, just like street ball versus Bat, you know, NBA, to me, it's more interesting because I know the rules and I want to, and so I, it's easier to follow, follow along and whatnot. So in life, you know, when it comes to government, and I also can't think of any single country that is actually running with libertarian principles that works. I just think it seems to be chaos or anarchy, just free for all. And it just seems like it would build naturally a very oppressive society where the strongest take over the weakest. And there's nothing really to stop that. So tell me, why is it you like, you know, what is it about libertarianism that attracts you? Convince me that I'm wrong on this, I suppose. Sure, sure. Well, libertarianism is not a rejection of rules. And there are plenty of rules in various, I mean, I have rules in my house and almost any business you're going to go into has rules and there's that, that's fine. The libertarianism is the belief that human beings have natural rights. Um, and that it starting with self ownership that you own yourself um, and that you have the right to own property as well and that the initiation of violence against peaceful people is morally wrong so that's basically what libertarianism is the idea of the um the powerful dominating the weak as a as a pro government argument to me is kind of absurd i mean there has been no better instrument throughout human history for the powerful to dominate the weak than strong centralized governments um and it you know the idea that well we don't see libertarian societies around the world i mean there there's degrees to which some are more libertarian than others um i would argue that all of the mo the most successful societies in history have been the ones with more freedom and all of the worst societies have been the ones with more tyranny um yeah. and that i think the the larger of an extent that you have free free markets and individual liberty you're going to see more prosperity and flourishing um i do think that historically the united states of america was a large experiment in free market capitalism uh, probably the largest one and for if you want to look at say the period but now again not saying this we were a perfectly libertarian society we certainly weren't and there were certainly uh um, areas and different groups of people who did not have their rights protected but just economically speaking if you look at the United States of America from, say, the end of uh, the, the Civil War to uh, like 1910, or even take it to like 1913, so 1865 to 1913. Before the Fed. You had a country. That's what you're like. <laughs> Before yes. the Fed was created. You had a country with okay. no, yes. Yeah, well, the Fed and the income tax came yeah. in 1913, 1914. So you had a country with no central bank, um, with no income tax, uh, with no federal regulatory state. Uh, federal spending was around 2% of the national income. But by today's standards, you just could not imagine how free market this is com compared to, say, today. And obviously, we did not have, we hadn't created all the wealth and technological advances yet. But in this period of time, it w literally became the most powerful economic country in the history of the world, beyond what anybody would have thought was even remotely feasible. Um, and that basically let that is kind of what we're all eating off of still to this day. Um, and so I, I would argue that, you know, yes, it's true that we don't see a lot of countries around the world, um, fully embracing libertarianism, but I also think that this is because, um, it, it's in the same way of like, well, why don't we see any cr countries in the world embracing the idea of like, nobody should ever murder or rape anybody. It's like, yeah. oh, because it benefits the people who are committing the crimes. That's why they do it. And we're not, we, we have this like mythology in America and particularly liberals have this where like, oh, we tried the free markets, but then that failed. And then the government came in to regulate these industries because we figured out that doesn't work. And this is what works so much better. 
When the reality is, if you actually look at the history, this isn't even like a, an opinion, in almost every single sector, what actually happened was that we had a free market, very powerful business interests within this industry decided to go and lobby government to get more sure. involved so they could rig the system in their favor. The banking industry is not regulated, so hyper-regulated, because like just a bunch of really good people in DC decided, hey, you bankers, you can't be doing this to people no more. It's, you can go look at it. It's because the, the freaking uh, the Morgans and the Rockefellers decided to rig the whole thing against the American people. Um, there's Nobody hates the free market more than capitalists, and nobody loves big government more than big business, which is hard right. for people, I think, typically to understand. But that is like objectively the reality. I wish people yeah, the on the regulation. left, like the good people on the left. Right. Right. And that's what Bobby Kennedy talks about a lot is like the corporate capture of the regulators, right? How the, the people who are supposed yeah. to be regulating these big companies are actually the ones, they're they're actually the regulators behind the regulators. And so they're telling them we want this regulation and that regulation because it's beneficial to them and it keeps the competition from, from flourishing. So I understand libertarianism from that perspective, I suppose. But when you look at like America prior to 1910, I mean, how many of the kids were going off to schools? How many people were poor, suffering, unable to get the food that they needed? Medical care, people died a lot earlier. So there's a lot of government programs that didn't exist at that time. And with certain government programs, you know, I mean, then people have been able to then have certain stressors off of them. I mean, one thing that sets, a, that sets apart a third world struggling country to like first world flourishing countries, one of the things that separates them is the what the people in their day to day life have to concern themselves with. What do they, you know, here in America, what do we concern ourselves with? Like people wake up and they're like trans and uh, dead naming. And, you know, we're so privileged that the only thing people are sitting here worried about are like really bullshit stuff that doesn't make any, it's like, Stuff that's not real for a lot of people, right? It's just not part of their day to day life. But that's like the what privileged people have to complain about when they've got their like frappuccino lattes or whatever. In third world countries, people are waking up and they're wondering how they're going to eat. You know, they're wondering if they're going to get injured and if that's going to turn into death for them, a simple injury, something that we would cure over here with no problem. For them, it's like a, a, a potential risk of death. You know, there's, but what, what separates that is, you know, when you wake up and you know there are certain things that are just taken care of, like I don't have to worry about, like you you don't have to worry about with your children, how are you going to afford their education? You, you might have that worry because you want them to go to a private school. You want them, you know, you desire, that's luxury, but you could send them to public school and you wouldn't have to think about it. And that's available to you without, you don't have to do anything that's available to you. So same thing with- um you know, there's a lot of things that are available to us. So do you think that government should have a role in that? Or do you think we should just get rid of the Department of Education entirely and everybody's on their own paying for kindergarten? Get get rid of it entirely. Um, but I, I'll, so let me say it like this, right? So just to like understand it, uh, poverty is the state of nature, right? So like that's th that's the starting point in human existence. Like man is born naked into the world. And we're in, sure. and if you're, and in order to get rich, to be a rich country, you have to produce a lot of stuff right. and you have to have technological advances and all of this. So in these, you're absolutely right. Like in these third world countries where people have to worry about things we don't have to worry about at all, but no matter what the government policy is there, that's going to be the case. Like, it's not like you could just snap a finger in the middle of Somalia and say, Oh, you know what? Everyone's rich now because of this government policy. We're providing all of this for free. They don't have the resources for the government to extract from the people to provide the resources back, right? Because everything the government has, it takes first from their, sure. their population, right? Like that's the, the way government gets money. They don't have enough wealth to extract to give it back to people. Now, the, the fact that Harry Brown, who's a, a great uh, libertarian hero, I believe he coined this term, but he said, uh, the government uh, breaks your leg and then offers you a crutch. And I think what um, liberals hold on to sometimes, they'll be like, yeah, but they're giving me this crutch. I mean, who else would be giving me this crutch if, if it wasn't for them? And he's like, yeah, you wouldn't have a broken leg. You wouldn't need the crutch. The, the government right now, you can talk about whatever scraps that the government provides to, to the citizens of the country. Th think about if you look at in just in from 
in 2008, the financial crisis, and then if you looked at COVID again, were the two largest transfers of wealth in human history from right. the American working class to the billionaire politically connected class. So the, they may give you some crumbs back after that, and you're like, hey, I'm kind of grateful for this crumb. Um, but no, I, I mean, I think it would just, there would be enormously m more amounts of wealth within the middle and working class in America if government wasn't extracting all of this to blow on tr trillions of dollars on blowing up bridges and then rebuilding them all around the world. So there, it's on net, there's no question, it's harming and taking much more away from you. But even with these, uh, like, even with something like uh, public school, I mean, I think it's an absolute disaster that government has such a monopoly on on educating kids. I think it's it's an it's a disgrace the state of public school in America. Go look at some of their performances in the areas that need it the most. The areas that need it the most, they they're taking. I don't know what it is nationally right now, but it's something close to twenty five thousand dollars per student per year in New York. And they're graduating kids who can't read. Their, their proficiency in, in math and ba basic, like, schooling, you know, like, the the, the most basic yeah, rudimentary not, things that, you're supposed to do in that's school. that's not, like, because of the government. I mean, China provides education yes, to their is. students. No, no, it, it's, it's not the government. It's the way the government does it. Because when you look at Asian countries, their governments also provide education for the students. But guess what? They're whizzes at math by the time they graduate. So it isn't that because the government's involved, yeah. that's why kids I mean, can't read and they can't do math. I mean, it's just the right, the, the certain government policies that then are implemented. I mean, if we took that away, you know, so there's no doubt that everything's run like piss poor, but it doesn't mean the actual functionality of it is wrong. It's just that the people who are, who are in charge have wrong ideas. You know, they're worried about no, see, kids um, having, you uh, know, like cultural experiences versus like learning math and reading. Yeah, no, that particular aspect of it can be different. Although I will say, if we're looking at the way that the Chinese Communist Party, you know, propagandizes the children in that country, I, I'm not sure that that's exactly like a, a, right. the, the example I want. Now, I, I get your point. Okay, they're they're propagandizing them in a different way, and they're teaching sure. them math and stuff because they want them right. to, to learn math. Um, but I, I am arguing that it is the nature of the system. It is the nature of the system. It's a it's a a forced monopolization of a service. You are forced to pay for it at the threat of imprisonment and they are a monopoly. So they have their customers kind of forced to come to them and they have no, they have none of the incentives that like private actors have, which is that they have to do a good enough job in order to continue to win your business. But look, the but school- But a lot of people, it's not, it's started, not about, they don't have the money to give anybody their business. Like there's no, I mean, prior to the Department of Education yeah, being well, formed, they, prior to public schooling, Poor people just didn't educate their kids. It was only the rich. So it, it, that's what my my issue with it is: is that then you're just prop you're just propping up the wealthy and continuing to make them wealthy, continuing to put them on a path of success, while the poor people who don't even have the money to decide on charter school or public school, they don't have the the luxury, the resource. Unless yeah, you're going to give them have, vouchers, why don't they have the money? Yeah, they well, just, why they're don't poor. They have, the they have to though. worry they're, about food. They're worrying about food more than their education. I and mean, they're like, listen, if I have to yeah, choose well, maybe, between feeding you or teaching you math, I'm going to just feed you. Yeah, well, maybe if they didn't have to pay property taxes and income taxes, they would have um, the money to pay this. And by the way, everybody pays property taxes, including renters, because it's just passed right. down through the cost of your rent. That has to be factored into it. So again, this is government breaking your leg and then giving you a crutch. You don't have the money for education because you're already forced to pay for the, the public schools. And by the way, you're not just forced um, to pay through your property taxes and through uh, your income taxes. You're also forced, forced to pay through the uh, inflation tax because when they want to print trillions of dollars to hand out to all of their friends, it makes your money less valuable. And look, I'll just say this one little interesting bit of history here. Um, and, and just keep in mind that there's a reason why governments monopolize certain fields. Like there's a reason why historically the government monopolized the post office, but not uh, making shoes. You know what I mean? Like there, there's different things and it's because for a long time, the post office was the center of communication. This is also why they, they went after, they monopolized phone companies and gave out TV licenses. And there's a reason why they want to monopolize 
who controls the information kids are getting. And this started in Prussia. This is where the term school comes from. It was a Prussian invention. They were the, the geographical and cultural precursors to the Nazis. And they came up with this system because far too often their conscripted armies were doing crazy things like running away or just pissing themselves and not fighting on the battlefield. And they came up with this model called school in order to basically get kids at a very young age and teach them how great the state was and how they were servants of the government. And then they could like get them to fight their wars for them. And Horace Mann openly talked about how we were bringing this Prussian system to America. And he said something about like how, well, I mean, they're, you know, using it for their own ends and we'll use it for different ends. But there's a reason why every day they get those kids up there to stand up and pledge allegiance. Right. I'll okay. say this. Very, okay. Very, I mean, no, I'll, I'll I'll get it that quick. it's like a, it could be definitely propaganda for sure. Well, let me let me just say it like this, okay? Because this yeah. is the great Tom Woods. This is his uh, example, which I think is one of the best things I've ever heard. But if you could just imagine that, let's say Walmart ran the schools, okay? Just make it not government. Imagine Walmart ran the schools, and um, they every single day, uh, all of the kids had to stand up and pledge allegiance to Walmart. And there were pictures of all the Walmart CEOs on the wall, and they would tell you things like, you know, the first Walmart CEO never told a lie. And even when he chopped down the cherry tree, he had to go tell his dad he really <laughs> chopped down that cherry tree. And then they teach you about how every, you know, Walmart also goes on mass murder campaigns like every, every couple months. And then they would teach you about how noble all of the mass murder campaigns that Walmart went on were. Like, if we were looking at this objectively, sure, I think we'd be like, this is sick. This is truly sick and disturbing, and I don't want my kids anywhere near it. The, people have a blind spot for when government does things compared to when anybody else does things. When if, if anybody else does it, it's mass murder. But if they do it, it's war. If anybody else does it, it's, it's robbing you. But when they do it, it's taxation. Right. If anybody else did it, it would be kidnapping and imprisonment. But when they do it, it's just, oh, you know, it's our policy on marijuana. It's like the, the amounts of evil that the government gets away with that people don't see for what it is, is like startling. But I don't know if that means we, we throw the baby out with the bathwater. I mean, I get it that, so you criticize and it, it, it's, it's legitimate criticism and I agree with it that the schools are teaching kids the wrong things, whatever that wrong thing might be. And each country might be teaching their kids wrong things and some countries are teaching them right things and whatever. So there is that, I get it. But it's not that we then just get rid of the entire system of school. We would instead change it. We would rise up. We would say, hey, we're aware of this now. We're aware of what you're teaching our kids, and we don't like it. We don't want you teaching them these. We don't want you propagandizing them. We don't want you making them say the Pledge of Allegiance. We don't want you, you know, making them all woke, you know, whatever it is. We just want you teaching them the best things for for them and 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 as a matter of national security. I mean, in my mind, look, I don't have kids. I, I'm fine paying with the education of other people's children because I believe it's better for society. I don't want to be run when I'm old and I'm retired and I'm like dependent on whatever policies the government people, whoever makes rules, laws, the, the, or just I'm just dependent on the people around me in my community. Even if there is no government, I'm just so I don't want to be surrounded by idiots because then idiots are going to be running shit. And I don't want them running things. And then what you know, what happens to me when I'm old and feeble or anybody else? I don't want to be surrounded by idiots. And so to me, it's worth Understood. it to invest in the education of other people's children so that you don't raise your kid to be an idiot because you might. And I don't want to really risk it, right? I mean, what if you don't, you, you think that the extra money you're going to get because you've saved money on property taxes, you decide, hey, I'm not going to send my kid to school. I don't need to do that. They can work, you know, these little child slave laborers or whatever. I could, I could put them to work around the house all day long. Instead, I'm going to put my money towards X, Y, Z, other thing that I think is better for my life. I mean, I think you should have the freedom to make those types of decisions, but I also don't trust that, you know, I learned during the pandemic, we are surrounded by idiots already. And so I don't know if I trust those idiots, you know, <laughs> to like uh, not teach their children to be idiots. So I guess. But, but when you start thinking, you know, like, like I, get, I get your point, but when you start thinking about these things, just kind of think about like kind of the weird, like logical inconsistencies about a lot of this, right? So it's like, you're, you're saying, look, I have no problem chipping in a few bucks if that's going to like help educate kids or, and, and yeah. I completely feel the same way. I don't have a problem chipping in a few bucks if there's like some old lady who needs a, a hip surgery or something like that. Like there right. are some people who need help and all, and, but also while we're saying I don't have a problem doing this, then it kind of leads to the question of like, okay, well, why do people have to be forced to do this? And then you take, you make the point that you make, which is well taken that you go, well, look, I don't really know if I can count on all of these other people to do the right thing. 
So like maybe yeah. some, but then at the same time, in order to have this government system, you have to count on those people to vote for the right politician, politicians right. who we all know are the most trustworthy members of society who only spend money in noble ways. So it's like either we can trust other people or we can't. Either we can trust them or in other ways, then you'd have to almost like be for some type of authoritarian dictatorship where no one gets a vote, but only like we get the, the wise people who really know what to do to lead. And we kind of know how that always turns out because power corrupts. But I would just say that there are like, it, I don't want the government to run all of the shoe factories in America. And I don't think you do either, because we have no problem with shoes right now. Like even really poor people, they pretty much all have shoes, you know, by the way, shoes are a lot more important than uh, education or healthcare. Try getting through a day without education or healthcare. Try getting through a day without shoes, it's much more important, <laughs> but the market works it out. So no one's calling for it. But if I'm saying like, if, if all, if the government ran all of the shoe stores, and I was like, hey, we should get rid of the Department of Shoes. This is ridiculous. We don't need it. That doesn't mean like I'm saying we shouldn't have shoes in society, right? So like I'm not saying like, like kids shouldn't be educated. I'm saying that like there's voluntary interactions with human beings versus not versus involuntary interactions with human beings are produce different results and they're different morally speaking. Um, and when you have voluntary interactions, they tend to trend toward win-win interactions because both people have to voluntarily do it. And they typically will only do that if they think they're both getting something out of it. When you have involuntary interactions, they tend to be win-lose because the one person just forces the other one to do something for their benefit. That's the problem that you get with government or any other type of initiation of violence. It's also the problem you get with private criminals. Um, and this is, this is, I think, been the great plague of humanity, you know, governments. Well, we all might have shoes, but some of us might be wearing, uh, certainly not me, but I wish, Louboutins and others are wearing, you know, pay less shoes. So I think that's the that's the problem that I have that's, with the, with then if we take away the education and we say everybody's on their own, is some people are gonna be getting the Louboutins of education and other people are gonna be getting the Walmart of shoes. And that, that but so we that's spend more kind on of, education. We spend more on education through the government than any other country in the world. And that's already the case. That's, that's right. just the fact of reality. Yeah, some people are going to have more than other people. The concern should never be, and I think this is an area where the left really goes wrong. The concern should never be what the gap is between the poor and the rich. The concern should be how do we get the poor to have more? And if the process of them having more makes the super rich guy 10 times more super rich, who cares? We got that poor person more stuff. And like that's that's what matters. Like we, inclu we increased their standard of living. And so I think that, look, the process of, of, um, of civilization, the process of like pulling ourselves out of like hunter gatherer, you know, like dirt poor societies into being modern advanced societies means some people are going to be wildly successful. Um, that's not always completely fair. It's usually most unfair when they've done it through government connections of some sort and not just like done it by providing a product that everyone really loves that made their lives better. Um, but that's going to be the reality. The question should always be like, what can we do to help those poor kids? And I would just argue that government screws over those poor kids at, at a rate of like a thousand to one for how much they do anything to help them. David has been really fun chatting with you. I, we could have this conversation for hours on end and days on end. And, and I would love to have you back at some point to just really focus on libertarianism and the, the beefs I have with it and the points that you're making. I think you make a lot of really great points. Um, and I think that, you know, I think if more people had conversations, even when they feel like they're coming from different places politically, I think we would come to a lot of agreement, a lot more agreement on the things that we do say, okay, yeah, this is a problem that needs to be corrected. And we could work on those problems you know, one one thing at a time. I wish our politicians in Washington would actually do that or even just on a local level. But it seems like, you know, they're too busy uh, fundraising for their campaigns or whatever. But Dave, this was really a, a great chat with you. Thank you so much for being here. Tell people how they can get more of you. Oh, uh, ComicDaveSmith.com uh, is my website. That's uh, I'm, I tour around, all around the country doing stand-up. If you want to come see me when I'm in your town, go over there. And then uh, part of the problem is my podcast, and that's like up everywhere where podcasts are available. And uh, thank you so much, Kim. I really, I really enjoyed it. Thanks for having me. Love to do it thank again sometime. Thank you for sometime. being here. Thank you.